James Monroe was the fifth president of the United States. He was born on present-day Monroe Creek in Westmoreland County. He became an orphan at age 16. His uncle Joseph Jones then took responsibility for him. He went to College of William and Mary for two years until he left in 1776 to fight for the American Revolution. After being one of the heroes of the Battle of Trenton, Washington described him as a brave, active, and sensible officer. In 1779, he began studying law under Thomas Jefferson. He was a member of the Virginia Legislature in 1782, the Continental Congress from 1783 to 1786, and the Virginia Ratifying Convention in 1788. He was also a senator from Virginia from 1790 to 1794, the Minister of France from 1794 to 1796, and the Governor of Virginia from 1799 to 1802. Henry Clay was a Democratic Republican Senator and Representative from Kentucky. Clay proceeded in the year following the War of 1812 to develop what became known as his American system. The American system was advanced by the Democratic Republican Party and a number of leading politicians including John C. Calhoun and John Quincy Adams, who were both influential members of Monroe's cabinet. The system was a new form of federalism. It called for support for a high tariff to protect American industries and generate revenue for the federal government, maintenance of high public land prices to generate federal revenue, preservation of the Bank of the United States to stabilize the currency, and a development of a system of internal improvements such as roads and canals which would connect the nation together and be financed by tariff and land sale revenues. Clay believed his plan would bring the U.S. to that height to which God and nature had destined it. The National Bank was reinstated, reinstated and the protective tariff became law in 1816, but Clay's plans for internal improvements at a national expense were thwarted by constitutional scruples of Presidents James Madison and James Monroe. I'm frustrated by the fact that your country now thinks that Texas is yours after fighting the Seminole Indians. The land is clearly still ours. I understand why you may be frustrated, but Jefferson has already come up with a compromise, saying that you guys will give America your land and in return will end our relations with Texas, but you guys clearly refused. I understand, but this was long before I knew what was going on. Alright, well, Monroe and I have agreed to renew this compromise. Um, you will give us East and West Florida, and we will give, and we will give you guys Texas. Okay, that's fine with me. The economic panic of 1819 was the first major financial crisis in the United States. The panic occurred during the end of the era of good feeling. The main cause of the economic panic was the poor economy. Some economists say that the panic was due to the cause of the first failure of the expansionary monetary policy. The economic panic of 1819 marked the end of the economic expansion that followed the War of 1812. The Rush Baguette Affair was an agreement between the United States and Great Britain signed on April 28, 1817 to disarm the Great Lakes. After the Treaty of Ghent, 1814, ending the War of 1812, both belligerents had fleets on the Great Lakes and the British planned to enlarge theirs. President James Madison and Secretary of State James Monroe instructed the U.S. Minister John Quincy Adams to propose mutual disarmament to Lord Castlereagh, the British Foreign Secretary, who accepted. Their arrangement was ratified unanimously by the U.S. Senate to give it the status of a treaty. Both nations agreed to maintain no more than one vessel each on Lake Ontario and Lake Champlain, each ship to be under 100 tons and armed with one cannon. All other armed vessels were to be dismantled and no new ones built. The agreement was important because it showed that Britain had abandoned their plans for preventing American expansion. It also began the demilitarization of the U.S.-Canadian boundary, which was later extended to land forces and was completed by 1871. Well, we can't admit you as a slave state because the number of free states and slave states are balanced right now at 11 each. So if we admit Maine as a free state and you as a slave state, then it'll be balanced to 12 each. Okay, so how about I become a slave state and then slavery will be banned south of my border? But that'll upset the southerners, so we can admit Maine as a free state and then give you the option to make a state constitution without restrictions on slavery. Okay, so I'll be part of the South, and here's my constitution. We can't accept this constitution because you deny freed slaves into Missouri, so you either have the option to change it and um, not deny freed black slaves their constitutional rights, and that will make you a state. Okay, that's fine with me. On December 2nd, 1823, Monroe gave a speech to the United States and to foreign countries in order to explain his ideas of expansion.
The American continents, by the free and independent conditions which they have assumed and maintain, are henceforth not to be considered as subjects for future colonization by any European powers. The translation, countries who are now not supposed to be an interest for European expansion. We should consider any attempt by the nation of Europe to extend their system to any position of this hemisphere as dangerous to our peace and safety. The translation, European colonization should be considered a threat. In the wars of the European powers, in matters relating to themselves, we have never taken part, nor does it comport with our policy so to do. The translation, colonies had nothing to do with what was going on in Europe. He also explained that America was not a tyranny. It was a republic. It did not have kings and queens. He issued a doctrine in response to the French, saying the Spanish wanted to bring new people into the Americas. James Monroe was the first president to ride on a steamboat. He had two daughters and a pet spaniel. James Monroe died on July 4th, which is the same date as John Adams and Thomas Jefferson. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Continents by the free and independent. <laughs> 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 We're fighting the Seminole Indians. Ah! So if we. What? Well, I'm not messing up. You're messing me up. Don't eat. Stop! Don't laugh! Don't laugh! Gosh. Oh. I, I screwed up. <laughs> Start over. <laughs> Would you like some tea? Alright. Okay. Dogs and a pet's- No! <laughs> I know. You don't know if you should be cut. Are you recording this? I will kill you. I will kill you! <laughs> I said unjust. I said unjust. Our henceforth not to be- Oh my god. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I get one mess up out of ten, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go see. I don't want to be given a slice date. Hey, July. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I almost died! I just An independent condition to which they have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. Okay. People into the Americas.